All right, so next we're gonna do a chain. What we're gonna do is you're gonna take that slip knot that you just made and you're gonna set your hands up in a way that feels comfortable to you. I suggest starting it like this initially and then changing it to fit your preference. Now this is how a right-hander would crochet. A left-hander would do mirror image. I cannot teach you how to left-hand crochet. I have tried, I've just failed miserably at it. The funny thing is, is that a left-hander taught me to crochet. So she is an amazing crocheter. I am just so-so. But for the purpose of this video, I can teach you how to right-hand chain and crochet. So for the chain, you need a slip knot on your hook and you need to set your hand up. And I suggest starting it like this. And the reason that we do that is we need enough tension on the yarn to keep your chain tight and your stitches even and also to pull yarn through your hands. So this you could consider a trigger finger, your um, pointer finger, you could consider it as a trigger finger and that is going to control all the tension in your project. And don't worry if initially, if your chains are kind of loosey-goosey, they probably should be a little loose to start because the looser your chain is, the easier it is, it is to learn to crochet into a chain. And it's very common for first-time crocheters to make very tight little chains, but then quickly you will realize that you cannot fit your hook back into those tight little chains when you go to crochet over top of the chain, which is how a crochet piece is worked. So, um, also, this is not going to be working in rounds. This is gonna be working in rows. Um, rounds is a different technique and I'll teach that later. So starting with your setup, you twine your yarn in your hands and as you get better at crochet, you'll figure a way out that you like. This is just how I like to do it. Pull far enough away with your um, hook hand that you have some space in between your crochet hook and your trigger finger. Then you're going to take your hook and yarn under. That means you're going to take your hook under your yarn, not over your yarn. You yarn under. Now some patterns will call for you to yarn under or yarn over depending on the look that you're trying to achieve. But for this demonstration, we're yarning under. So take your hook under the yarn, which we call yarn under, and pull it through that loop, the slip knot loop that you made. That's one chain. So slowly again, yarn under, pull through. Yarn under, pull through. Yarn under, pull through. Yarn under, pull through. And you'll see that as I create this chain, I'm losing the ability to control up here at the hook because I'm holding down here on the very tail end of that slip knot. So I need to move my fingers up the chain. In the beginning, you'll do this very consciously, like you'll be aware that you're doing this, but the more you crochet, the less you'll even think about it. So I use a bunny ear method where I hold the project right here up at the hook and then I crochet about five or I chain about five and then I move my fingers up the hook up towards the hook and I don't even realize that I'm doing it um, but I think it's important that you realize that you're doing it initially so that you can control you can control the tension that's happening here on the hook you'll also notice that the hook has this wide part right here that is so that you can slide your chain down the hook and widen it a little bit to make sure that you're keeping your chains nice and even. Eventually, it gets to the point where you don't really have to do this because you'll just know by looking at it. But when you're first starting out, it's not a bad idea to chain, slide down, chain, slide down, chain, slide down, even though it's kind of an extra step, it just helps that initial chain be very even without putting much effort into thinking about it. So let me slow that process way down once again. All right, so again, set your hand up. I would suggest some sort of method like this with the yarn always coming over your trigger finger. 
No matter how it's looped through these fingers, keep your thumb out of the way, you're gonna need it. Keep these hand fingers out of the way, you're gonna need them to grab your project. Don't ever take your hands, don't ever take your right hand off your hook to try and pull loops over. A lot of my crochet students do that initially because they think it's easier and there is some truth to that. It is easier to chain using both your hands, but it's not good for crochet. You need one hand on the hook and one hand controlling the yarn. So resist the urge to use both hands to touch the yarn. Only keep one hand on the hook and one hand on the, the ball, the yarn ball. All right, so again, I'm setting up my hand. I have the slip knot on the hook. I'm yarning under, so I'm taking the hook under the yarn and I'm pulling it through the chain. I'm gonna do that one more time, moving my fingers up that chain, under, pull through. One more time, under, pull through. And you'll notice that I'm keeping tension here. I'm actually using these fingers to pull this down. So I'm not actually using this hand to do anything but pull the chain and control the tension here. Up the chain, yarn under, pull through. Yarn under, pull through. Yarn under, pull through. And now your pattern might tell you to chain 25 or 40 or however many it tells you to chain. To figure that out, turn your chain until you see the Vs and you can see mine right here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and one on the hook, seven. So I've so far chained seven. All right, and that is how you chain.